All right, so hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, we'll be starting in um, five, seven more minutes. We are waiting for the rest of the participants to join. And uh, meanwhile, we are waiting. It would be great if the participants can introduce yourself in the chat box. You can mention your education background and research interest. Uh, can we hear from the participants about uh, their education background and research interests? Um, Deepika, Professor Sarkar, hello, Rachel. Uh, it's good to see you back. Thank you, ma'am. All right, we have few participants introducing themselves. Um, so I'm Madhu, an MSc biotechnology graduate student and has research interest in bioinformatics using data science for genomic data analysis and data visualization. Thank you so much, Madhu, for introducing. And uh, I'm curious to know what um, what is your motivation to learn more about uh, biomedical data science in R? And uh, we also have Rasail with us. Rasail is working as a research assistant at the Genome Center at Joshua University and is also working as a national surveillance at COVID-19 right now. Thank you so much, Rasail. Can you also uh, let us know what uh, motivated you to learn more about biomedical data science in R? Okay, can I tell something? Because as I have some problem with typing, I'm trying to switch to mobile. I'm trying to switch to laptop from mobile. So is it okay if I introduce myself uh, of like voice? Yes, absolutely, Professor Sarkar. 
Okay. Uh, I'm Dhruvasi Shorka. My area, uh, I've done my PhD in computer science and engineering. Currently, I'm working with Amity University, Kolkata, as like head of institution, Amity Institute of Information Technology. My primary research areas are computational social science, uh, natural language processing, and machine learning. I have some interest in uh, biological network analysis along with uh, so big data analysis. So that is a reason that has actually motivated me to uh, join today's session. All right, thank you so much, Professor Sarkar for joining with us and we are glad to have you uh, in participate in the webinar. And I hope uh, today's webinar will be uh, very fruitful for you for your research as well. And um, what about the rest of the participants? Uh, we have uh, Aparna, uh, SM, Nelson, Savita. I'm curious to know about you guys as well. All right, I'm monitoring the chat and I can see that some of the participants have uh, started introducing. So Aparna is interested in spatial transcriptomics. Uh, can you also let us know what is your education background and what motivated you to uh, learn more about biomedical data science in R? All right, uh, we have a couple of responses in the chat. Um, we have um, Aparna, who's doing PhD in cell and developmental biology. And then we have uh, Nelson, uh, a student from Philippines, and who wants to learn more. I'd like to request the participant to mute themselves. Thank you. And um, we also have uh, Savita, who is a molecular biologist and is interested in sequence analysis. And uh, Deepika says, I got to know that I can do a lot of research with data science career in biotechnology that we can analyze the genome data and genome sequencing. And these bioinformatics skills motivated me to switch my research interest towards data science. That's uh, pretty motivational. Thank you so much, Deepika. And we have Amir with us, who is a master's student in microbial biotechnology. Thank you so much, uh, Amir. Can you also let us know what motivated you to learn more about uh, data science in R?
Uh, we have a query from Nelson. Uh, can I have a certificate for this uh, seminar? Well, this is this is just a webinar, which is part of a program that will commence soon. So for the program, after the completion, uh, you will receive a certificate, but not for the webinar. I hope that answered your query. We'll be starting with uh, the program details in just a few more minutes. All right, so Amir says uh, he loves to do some research in this field and develop information. And uh, Oliver, we have Oliver with us who is a molecular biologist and is interested in data science using R as well as Python, and he's from USA. Thank you so much, Oliver. So uh, without further delay, let's start with today's webinar. Meanwhile, the rest of the participants uh, introduce themselves in the chat box. So hello, everyone. A very warm greeting to one and all. My name is Sri Gauri Krishnagumar, and I would like to welcome you all for the webinar on biomedical data science in R program. So this webinar is a part of the online training program that will cover practical and conceptual aspects of data science, including data wrangling, statistical analysis, and machine learning in application to high throughput biomedical omics data. So throughout the program, students will get an understanding of the opportunities and limitations of machine learning in the context of basic preclinical and clinical research. So before we begin with today's webinar, let me also take a brief moment to introduce you to the team behind the program. We are a US-based bioinformatics company who is working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy to use analytical tools and our mission is to make bioinformatics more accessible. And as a part of our mission, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine local program logistics and adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. And this training has been completed by over 24,000 participants from 187 countries in over 300 workshops in six different specialization tracks that includes oncology, infectious diseases, precision medicine, neuroscience, data science for biomedical data. And as a part of the training, you will have access to the omics logic resources, which takes a combination of training modules, data analysis tools, curated project data sets, and interactive sessions with mentors to give the student a clear part of the Bloom's taxonomy pyramid. And this also comes with an access to the omics logic courses, which includes courses on bioinformatics, precision medicine, multi-omics, that includes genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, and epigenomics, data science, that includes bioinformatics using R and Python, as well as cheminformatics, and example projects of different fields which you could learn from and replicate for your research work. And the omics logic platform also gives options for analyzing a given data set, and these data sets and associated publications can be used in several ways. That is, you can learn bioinformatics without any coding at all. And for those interested in opting the non code pathway, they will be given directions to access the dbioinfo platform for bioinformatic processing and analysis of data. The platform includes demo pipelines, as well as data management and analysis cloud infrastructure to run the bioinformatic pipeline. And different stages of analysis are performed in different sections on this multi omics platform. And for those interested in learning to analyze data through coding, we provide the Omics Logic Code Playground, which will help you develop coding skills while learning popular packages in R programming and Python to visualize, annotate, and analyze complex patterns in the biological data. So now to view the various courses and example projects and student projects, you need to first sign up on the Omics Logic Learn portal. Before that, let me walk you through a brief demo on what a completed profile, what a completed profile on the portal looks like. So once you sign up on the portal, these are the features that you need to update on your account. That is, a completed profile will have a profile image, full name with appropriate capitalization, link to your social media handles, a brief bio about yourself that will consist of your education background and research interest, and the mentors can view your progress under the activity tab. The courses you are currently completing will appear under the courses tab. Finally, after the completion of your coursework, the certificates will appear under the certificates. So with that, let us begin by signing up on the Omics Logic Learn portal. 
I can see that some of the participants uh, have already signed up, but for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, uh, I'll show you a brief demo on how you can sign up. I'm pasting the link for signing up in the chat box. Please visit the link and I'll walk you through on how you can sign up. So for those of you who are signing up for the very first time, you can click on the create an account option that you see here. So once you click here, you can enter your name, email ID and password and uh, directly sign up. Or you also have the option to sign up using any of your social media handle. That is, as you can see, you can sign up using your Google account, Facebook account, Apple account, GitHub account, or even Twitter. And for those participants, who already have an account on the portal, you can simply click on the login now option that you see here and enter your existing email ID and password and directly click on sign. In. So I'll pause for a couple of seconds for the participants to sign up before we proceed ahead with the webinar. And once you have signed up, please put a yes in the chat box so that I know I can proceed ahead. And for those participants who already have signed up or have signed in, they can put a done in the chat box so that I know um, I'm good to go. And uh, if you're facing any technical issues, you can let me know in the chat as well. And our team is here and we'll be happy to look into it. We have one yes. And uh, if you have any doubts, I'm happy to... Uh, show you how you can sign up once again. You can let me know that as well. All right, Deepika has also signed up. What about the rest of you? I'm monitoring your responses in the chat. Thank you so much, Noranir. All right, so I can see that the participants are signing up. So I'll proceed ahead with, uh, without further delaying the webinar. But please um, keep sharing your responses in the chat and if Don't you have any All right, so I'm going to click on sign in since I already have an account on the portal. So once you sign up, uh, you will be able to see the courses tab here. So under the courses tab, when you scroll down below, you will see a search bar that says looking for a specific course. So here, if you are to enter the area of interest that uh, you're interested, let's say the keyword uh, that you're interested is machine learning. So when you enter that keyword, that will show you the various courses and example projects that makes use of the concept. And uh, when you type R, that will show you the coding exercise, coding uh, courses that makes use of the R program. Okay, thank you so much, Utkarsh. So you can navigate through and take a look at it at your own pace. But for now, let's uh, move on to the part where I was explaining about setting up your profile. So for that, you can click on this blue tab that says welcome back with your email ID. When you click on that, that will take you to your profile setting. So here you will see an icon that is profile. This when you click on this, it will enable you to edit the features that I was talking about in my presentation. Once again, as a reminder, make sure that your name is in proper capitalization. Add a profile image and your bio should consist of your education background and research interest and link your social media handles as well. So once you have done, click on update and that will get updated on the photo. And you will also see various tabs in your profile. So under the activity tab, like I mentioned, the community manager and the program mentor will be tracking your learning progress. And under the courses tab, the course that you're currently taking will be displayed as well as the progress that you're making. And once you complete a project and publish it on a portal, that will be displayed under the projects tab. Finally, when you enroll for the program, 
the program details and the progress will be displayed under the programs tab. And finally, after the completion of the required coursework and the associated assignments and quizzes, you will be able to receive the certificates under the certificates tab. And another important section that I want to show you is the project tabs that is there on the portal. So here you will be able to check out the various student projects that have been published on the portal. And these project topics range from infectious disease, precision medicine, oncology, machine learning, and so on. So you can have a take a look at all of these at your own pace. And uh, that was all about navigating through the portal. So for basically starting with the today's session, I would like to pass on the stage to uh, Mr. Shubham Kumar. He will be playing a, a short recording that will consist of the program details. So over to you, Shubham. Um, thank you, Shigori. So just uh, let me share my screen. Shigori, could you confirm if my screen is visible? I can see the program page. Uh, yeah. uh, can you hear uh, yes. Uh, we are not able to hear it. Just a second, I'm checking on it. Perhaps uh, we can pass on to the stage to uh, Ms. Sparsh there, who can explain more about the program details. Over to you, Sparsh. Uh, no, I guess uh, Shubham has already started. So we can first continue with this and then I can uh, explain about the program structure, resources, and the registration part together. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Shriori. Yeah. Uh, can I play the video now? Yes, please. Okay. Mushroom, it looks like the screen is blank. I don't know. Uh, I have shared the screen, but I don't know why it is not playing properly. Uh, let just a second. I'll try something else. Okay. Uh, till then, uh, Shubham, figure out the technical glitch. I shall take it over. So. Yeah. Uh, Okay, perfect. So Shrigori, could you please confirm that if my screen is loading and if everyone can see it? Yes, we can see the program screen. Perfect. May, may, may I suggest something? Yeah, sure. Ma'am, I hope uh, if you want to continue your share your screen, I hope uh, you have to suggest him first. Open the uh, file, then you will screen share. It will be open. I hope that. Yeah, he is figuring I... out what exactly is the problem, uh, Parvez. Uh, till then, okay. I can continue with the like program, curriculum, and the resources, etc. And then we can pass it over to Shubham. Thank you. Thank you for your suggestion. Okay, so um. 
I'll just quickly uh, open up the program page that is biomedical data science in Python uh, in R, sorry. And here it is. So uh, as you like today is the webinar the free introductory webinar where we'll be explaining about what we'll be including in the program, what kind of topics you all will uh, get to learn, both conceptually as well as practical hands-on will be there. And then the very first session is on 20th of February, uh, where we'll be including uh, where, uh, some of the topics, which I'll just show you <coughs> on why. So just to give you a program overview uh, that Biomedical data science in R, in this program, you will learn different data science skill and experience bioinformatic uh, methods of analysis. And this training program will cover both the practical as well as conceptual aspects of data science, which will include data wrangling, statistical analysis, machine learning, and application to high throughput biomedical omics data, Using, bio data, uh, using big data analysis tools on the T-BioInfo platform. Through this particular course, you will have an understanding and you'll get an opportunity about the limitations, the perspectives, the opportunities in machine learning, in the content of basic preclinical uh, and clinical research related to biomedical data. So further, when you scroll down, you could see uh, there is a full-fledged curriculum which is reflecting on the program page and then there is an interactive session. So on the left-hand side or it's maybe it's your right-hand side, on my screen there is a calendar and uh, the first, like the today is the very first, like the webinar of the program and the program is going to commence from 20th of February. I guess there is some technical glitch uh, that is why the dates are being different over here so the first program the first session of the program is on 20th and that is on uh, Monday next week and we'll be rolling out a calendar invitation to all the particip uh, participants because the very first session of the program is free for all so that they get a glimpse of what is uh, what we'll be including in the program and uh, they get to know about the topics which we'll be covering throughout the program, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I'll quickly uh, walk you all through with the curriculum and the resources which you'll have access to when you will enroll in this program, not register, enroll. So the first session that is on 20th, it's the first uh, introduction to the program where we'll be covering these all topics. That is introduction to bioinformatics and data science. What are the publicly available data repositories so as to extract the data sets? Then overview of some key topics that we'll be covering, including data loading and data preparation, data visualization in R, some of the concepts, statistical concepts in tests, t-tests, etc. ANOVA, and then supervised and supervised uh, machine learning. Then with every session and uh, these number of topics which are which we'll be covering, there is some associated online resources which are linked. So the, for the very first session, it is data processing and visualization, loading data in R, BioML1 introduction to machine learning in biomedical data and so on. Now, if we move further, the second session would be on processing high throughput big data. So now the topics we'll be covering would get like we what we'll be doing is we will be transiting each and every participant of our of our program from a basic level, from a beginner level to an advanced level. So the very first session would be a kind of a beginner level. And then we'll start transiting each and every student or participant from beginner to intermediate and then to advanced. So now the complexity of the program will get a bit more uh, like high. Uh, so the second session will be on how to process the high throughput big data. 
The topics which we'll be covering is data complexity and need for preparation, availability and variability of data, unprecedented detail and volume, data heterogeneity, complexity and noise, then types of omics data, which will include genomic data, transcriptomic data, metagenomic data, need for interpretability and reproducibility, limitations of statistical analysis, etc. And again, with this associated online resource, uh, we have some associated online resources, which will include introduction to the multi-omic fields like genomics, transcriptomic, metagenomics, then BioML1 high throughput data and technology and BioML1 data preparation for ML. Now, the third session would be on major types of machine learning methods, where, they, uh, where we'll be including statistical analysis, types of machine learning, what is data mining, what is classification, then k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, supervised machine learning, classification, then unsupervised machine learning, clustering, etc., dimensionality reduction. Then the next session would be on machine learning for data visualization, where we'll be... Uh, uh, we'll get in much deeper uh, where we tell you about the variance, covariance, then what is PCA, what is coordinate analysis, what is continuous and ordinal data, what is structured data, what are different patterns and association, etc. Then we have specific sessions on unsupervised learning for clustering and then supervised learning for classification so that every participant can get an in-depth knowledge of what is what are the types of machine learning? So in unsupervised uh, learning clustering, we'll be, we'll be guiding you, we'll be telling you about patterns and learning, clustering for data mining, exploratory analysis on PCA samples, feature components and noise, clustering algorithms and linkage, k-means and hierarchical clustering, big data clustering, PAM, fuzzy, et cetera clustering samples versus features. And then there will be ha practical hands-on with the Google Collab notebooks. And then we have a separate session for supervised learning classification, where we'll teach you about, we'll give you an overview of what is supervised learning, preparing training and test data sets, what is binary decision trees, what is random forest, discriminant analysis, LDA, QDA, so support vector machine, validation of model accuracy, working with our Google Collab Notebook, etc. So the whole motive of this program is to like in the end, the outcome should be one uh, can like uh, one can prepare their own independent uh, research project, how they can uh, use our language and then analyze the biomedical data which is being generated from clinical research or preclinical research, uh, research etc. So the next session would be on combining selecting ML methods and the last would be selecting a project for ML analysis. So this is the outcome which uh, we want every participant to come with up if they have any idea. So most welcome. If not, then uh, we and the other guides like the researcher, we have a full uh, researcher or team of researchers. So they'll be guiding you how you can design your bioinformatics research project using our, uh, our language and which will include uh, topics like gene expression, transcriptomic or varied analysis, genomics, microbiome diversity, metagenomics, basic research and clinical. Depending upon your research interest, we will be integrating our language for the interpretation part and the data set would be on different multi-omic study. It could be on transcriptomic, genomic, metagenomic. It totally depends upon your research interest. So the last part, the advanced part is designing a full-fledged uh, ML project. So this is the curriculum which we'll be covering in a biomedical data science in our uh, program. Now, if I show you, uh, we have few courses which are there on Omics Logic Learn Portal. Uh, Shri Gauri, could you please confirm if my screen is still visible? Yes, we can see the uh, introduction to our program page. Now okay. it's off. you can see the courses page. Perfect. Uh, so if you will simply write over here R. So there are these two courses which uh, which will uh, like which will appear on your uh, home page on your screen. So the first coding course is uh, for the beginners. 
how one can get started in bioinformatics and R coding, etc. using R coding. So when you'll click over it, uh, you can see the, uh, that there are few few lessons. There are four lessons which you'll have access to once you will enroll in this particular program. And in this lesson, you will have a mix of uh, data or information, which will include uh, written data, which will include tables, which will include videos, etc. So that you can learn in every aspect. So this particular lesson will provide you, will give you an introduction to analyze analysis of biological data using our language. So in this coursework, you'll get started with bioinformatics by learning how you can load data, how you can visualize and process data, how you can read DNA sequences in R, DNA replication and re re uh, reverse complements in R, and in the end, analyze those genomic sequence, find patterns out of it, how you can interpret the language of DNA, RNA, and protein. So this coursework like, is just for the beginners one who have an urge to learn to know what exactly is our coding coursework. Then a uh, little bit of, if we increase a little bit of complexity, then we have another course that is our coding course two, where we are introducing the participants with introduction to data science bio ML. So again, the participants will have access to this particular coursework also when they will enroll in this program. And in this coursework, we have in total 10 lessons where you will get to know how you can load data to, uh, and check for variable data, how you can process data and visualization, what is advanced data visualization, then dimensionality reduction, PCA visualization, data visualization using TSN, then statistical analysis tests, differential gene expression, clustering k-means and hierarchical clustering, etc. And furthermore, lessons are there. Advanced supervised machine learning, classification, etc. So this course basically is designed to introduce an element of data science in R, such as data wrangling, visualization, statistical analysis, and machine learning, etc. Furthermore, to know more about what this particular courses include, how the information is being distributed, how one can leverage all the resources which we have on this portal and through this particular program. I would like now to pass it over to Shubham so that he can play the video and you will get an idea of how we have designed the curriculum, how we have designed the courses related to our language. So uh, Shubham, I hope uh, now the technical glitch is resolved and you can play the video. Over to yes. you, Shubham. Oh, thank you so much, Parsh. So I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah, is my screen visible now? Yes, Shubham, we can see your screen. We can see the program page. All right, so I hope the audio would be fine. So for today, I am going to, for yes, example... Yes, yes, we can now hear audio. also. It's totally audible. Okay. Um, mainly we can with, shift uh, over. Yeah, we can see the program page, Shubham, uh, but not the uh, video which you are playing. Mm. Yes, yes. Okay, please. Yeah, carry on. Okay. So, Morning will yeah. be discussing the last two sessions, right? Basically. So, for today, I am going to, for example, um, mainly discuss with. Is it fine now? Is the video playing right? Yes, Shubham, please continue. Okay, all right. Um, data processing and visualization. So uh, it all starts with loading up the data and understanding the patterns of the data. And why should we do that? Why should we pre-process the data? If the machine learning methods are so advanced and so intelligent and so smart, then what is necessary to perform this uh, data processing? So the need for processing this data is actually given are uh, discussed in extreme detail in the BioML course 7 in lesson number 3. So that is what we are going to deal with. Let's, let me share the um, link once it's loaded. Once it's loading for me. Yes. So this is where we can load. 
Center. This is uh, made free for all of you to explore uh, and understand the necessary or the need to prepare a, a data that is actually reflective of the pattern that is present in the data. So, I mean, you can read through this passage, but this one picture is sufficient to uh, give you the message, right? Irrespective of the type of model that you are building, either it is more complex or more simple, it's a good model or a, a statistically accurate model, mathematically a valid model, it will return garbage results if you are going to give a data that is unprepared or data, for example, that is filled with technical noise or data that is completely inconsistent and data sometimes that has duplicated information, right? So these are all good. So following along, what actually constitutes a good data or rather what actually constitutes a bad data when you, when you should raise a red flag if you see some patterns in the data. So this, these are all very important points that you should keep in mind. So this will not only affect your machine learning model, but it will affect your downstream analysis in general. So these types of uh, bad characteristics of the data that we don't want in any of our data analysis. So for example, we don't want um, uh, signal to noise ratio be very low. So uh, that begs the question, then how can we estimate this signal to noise ratio? How can we how can we find out whether my data has a um, lower signal to noise ratio or a higher uh, signal compared to the noise? So uh, we will discuss this in, in a short while. And then coming down, whether most of, sometimes my um, uh, Onyx data can actually have missing data or depending upon the type of processing that it has already undergone, uh, it can have imputed data, right? Um, uh, why we are actually dealing with this? Because for uh, for data science applications, uh, we will mainly discuss or we will mainly um, uh, deal or um, we are going to deal with data that is pre-processed and available at, uh, at a different data repository because our idea is to collect as many data as possible so that, that our model can understand the um, pattern that is available in the data. So um, in that case, when you are collecting data from different several different resources or collecting data that is produced in mass, there's chance of these, some of this data can be uh, 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 was not recorded well or is, is actually missing. So we need to know about how to handle this missing data and how much of the percentage is actually acceptable. And when the percentage becomes higher, what should we do about this missing data? So we will discuss that also. In, in the sessions in detail, but we will quickly go through uh, in the next uh, few minutes also. So, for example, we might encounter data with a batch effects that uh, is, for example, a consistent difference between samples because of they are measured in two different places or they are measured by two different persons, etc. And we can, we will definitely, uh, for example, deal with some kind of, we might deal with samples that are mislabeled because labeling is done by people and we have to give some sort of uh, error percentage that can arise from labeling from uh, human cases, right? So, and these are all some of the uh, uh, red flags, or these are all some of the important points that we want to verify whether our data has such bad qualities, and if yes, what are we going to do about that, right? And uh, this is what is addressed in exploratory data analysis, right? And where you can subject your data to a myriad of different plotting methods and visualization tool that is going to help you each and every one of these answers. Whether my data has any mislead, whether my data is of low quality, whether my data has uh, always any, uh, for example, uh, uh, any required uh, data distribution, like many of the statistical methods might require your data to follow a Gaussian distribution. So whether that is actually followed or not. So these are the kind of answers that you will uh, get when you are going to work with um, um, data uh, visualization and exploratory data analysis. And most importantly, sometimes, as I mentioned, we might have to uh, collect or gather data from multiple different resources. And also, even uh, within these one single resource, the data might not be in a format that we want it to be. So in that case, how to um, convert the data into correct format and what constitutes the format that we require the data to be in, uh, to be used by machine learning analysis, etc. So these also, uh, they're also very important. And by now you would have guessed that um, 
using data science methods for biomedical data actually deals with more data pre-processing rather than applying the data science methods. So majority of the work is done before applying many of these um, more to be discussed machine learning tools on your data. So the data has to be prepared well, the data has to be understood very well before subjecting that to machine learning tools and methods to answer our type of question. So that is very, very important. So this, I'm going to stop with this for this lesson here, but you are extremely welcome to uh, go through this uh, this whole lesson, which is very, very informative. Because uh, in the next section, we are going to show you or introduce you to one of the most used uh, data set, curated data set, data set from our portal, uh, which deals with uh, breast cancer cell line uh, mix data analysis, where, this, um, where we have seven different types of molecular profiling done on these breast cancer cell lines in addition to uh, uh, treatment response data is also available so uh, you can start as simple as uh, performing um, visualization options to understand patterns in the data exploratory data analysis and as complex as using this data for multi-omics uh, data integration and um, find out for example and the cell lines that are going to uh, respond positively to a given treatment or that cell lines that are not responding to any uh, given treatment, uh, given set of treatments. So, uh, this, uh, more about this specific project is actually given in detail in a, in a separate project. If uh, Sri Gauri can paste the cell line PDX cell line project, that will be great. So where we take this data and explain you in detail about what this data is actually uh, telling you, what this paper is actually telling you, and then we use unsupervised and supervised machine learning methods to understand patterns in the data and to help you uh, uh, get a good um, introduction to how different machine learning methods can be used to do answer key questions in uh, using data from publicly available resources. Okay, let's end up this data. Um, thank you, Sri Gauri. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, so you can get that. So for the next part, for the next five minutes to ten minutes, I have. So we are going to having established the necessary to necessity to perform. Um, 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 exploratory data analysis and the pre uh, preparation of data, then we are going to go to another associated resources which is going to deal with our coding course 2. And we have made this lesson 3 advanced data visualization free for you to explore again. And uh, yeah, let me uh, go to that lesson and I'll give any this. Uh, if I can place this link here, yeah. So this is given free. So we can start with understanding the format of the data, right? Uh, so you can uh, view the full table here. So when I spoke about uh, different formats of the data, this is what I actually mentioned. So we want the data to be in proper uh, columns and row format. So you are you are free to download this data and open it up in Excel. And and notice generally about this data. This is a curated data set which is straight away from the cell line project, and that is going to have or fulfill certain um, that's going to have process some characteristics that we will explore using um, these uh, data exploratory methods. So what are they? First, we have to load them to understand uh, to um, understand the patterns in the data. So the first part is going to lead, deal with how to load this data from your computer into R's environment. So uh, if you are absolute newbie to R, this is where I want you to start. This is already the third lesson in this course. So the first two lessons are going to have even basic steps on setting up R, or loading the data, and then verifying whether all parts of the data is loaded perfectly or not. So I want you all to start there if you are a new R. And then, for example, cleaning the data. You can notice, or you will definitely notice in this data set, we have some any values or some uh, incompleteness in this data. So how are we going to deal with that? So if you have this incompleteness, do we um, here in this specific uh, data, right, we are going to exclude them. And in the session that is going to deal with this specific uh, uh, lesson, then we will discuss about why, uh, why excluding these NA values is a better choice than doing anything else. So that's what we will do. If you are Google eyed or keen eyed, you can see that 
after performing this uh, the um, incompleteness exclusion, we are actually left with 992 rows. Earlier, we were left with 1000 rows. So we have completely disregarded eight uh, genes for their information because they have partial information. And then comes uh, a myriad of uh, statistical visualization tool like we can perform subject this analysis, subject this data to uh, box plot. Right? And this is going to show you start like this. Uh, that's going to show uh, tell you about the data distribution in general, right? And uh, what do we need to do for the box plots to look like this? Right? We have to transform the data into logarithmic format because the existing format of the data does not uh, follow a Gaussian distribution, which is absolutely necessary for majority of the statistical tests and analysis. Uh, okay, Kashi says he is not able to hear me. I hope many of you can hear me very well. And if yes, you can hear, please check your audio settings. Yeah. So this couple of uh, box plots from your data generally without subjecting it to any sort of pre-processing is going to tell you that the data is not normally distributed or does not follow Gaussian distribution. So for that case, we will simply use a logarithmic transformation of the scale of the data and then we can make the box plot which is going to tell us about the data. For example, it's going to tell me that most of the non-malignant samples has a median value or median expression value that is a little bit higher than the plot in your samples. And we can already see that there is one non-malignant sample which doesn't fit with the other four. So these are all some of the clues or insights that you can generate after making a box plot uh, like this. And this doesn't start, uh, stop with box plot, right? You can also make a box plot by grouping the information that is present in uh, different samples because since these are all biological duplicates of sample under one condition, we can group them together. That is going to give us some more information. So, I want you all to explore this specific lesson because we have let it free for 24 hours. So um, this has much necessary or much needed uh, code in this lesson. And um, if you scroll down, it's going to give you um, insights into what you can learn about scatterplot and how, how you, more importantly, how you can visualize or how you can visualize your data using scatterplot and what you can learn from scatterplot, uh, options like bot, bar plot, uh, options like, for example, you, come down, you can use a histogram, right? And one of the most useful <clears throat> options in this um, in this learn portal is a practice session sections, right? Uh, in all the coding sections, uh, there are other ways of transforming the data from log transformation. You can normalize the data using quantile normalization, right? So uh, we can discuss that also in the. Um, or z-score normalization is another way, but uh, quantile normalization and log, log transformation will uh, uh, take care of most of the uh, uh, distribution issues. Right? And yeah, most useful section in this is going to be practice the code section, where after you have learned to, for example, load, clean, and visualize the data, this is the place uh, that, that will be explained in more detail in the separate section section because if we go there, then uh, it's going to take long time. And it is also available in this uh, lesson that we have given free. So feel free to explore and understand how this transformation is uh, uh, how this transformation is actually um, uh, done and what are the advantages of that. So I want to show you uh, about this practice code section where it's going to load a hard console from our server and you are. Uh, free to, for example, uh, run codes in this section. So for you to um, get uh, a clear understanding of what we have actually discussed so far, we have left out little bits and pieces of these codes here so uh, so that you can verify what I have learned in the above section. For example, if you just run these codes as it is, it's going to throw you an error. It says error running code. So if you read, it says, uh, we have actually made some of the syntaxes incomplete and please complete those missing parts based on what you have learned so far. So I'm going to check if there is anything incomplete in the first uh, uh, let, uh, line. Looks like the first line is actually incomplete. The separator is not actually mentioned. Uh, the separator is a tab separated format right? and uh, most of uh, as you would have uh, uh, learned from the above section and the rest of the section is true. Okay, let's run this again. Let's see. We can clear the output of the console by clicking this and then run it again. And now again, it's giving me some error. So let's check the other ones. 
okay, this seems to be fine. And now, okay, this part is incomplete. Where I have to check the dimension of the data, the data is not well mentioned. So let's mention the data and clear it and then run it. And then I get the um, uh, uh, necessary feedback that I have been successful in running the code and the answer is, and the answer is correct. Sometimes you might encounter, for example, uh, options like the answer is correct. Let's see that, for example, here. Um, so if I do this, uh, if I run this, it's going to tell me error running code. Okay, I, I just wanted to show you, for example, here, let's see that. Mm -hmm. Let's see that if this is a uh, test case. And let's see. You say it is also saying error running code. Okay. Why is that the case? Okay, I just wanted to show you, but sometimes if there is no problem in your syntax, it's going to show you success in running the code, but the answer is incorrect. That would mean that you don't have any uh, syntax error, but you have some error in which, uh, in where you are generating the output. So you want to uh, check your syntaxes and uh, run it again. So that's what I wanted to describe, uh, but looks like I'm not able to do that. But yeah, uh, you can actually keep exploring this. I want to stop here due to time concerns, but um and this is going to also open up assignment for you where we have given a complete console free for you to explore where you can uh, took or pick bits and pieces of the code that you have uh, learned from the previous section and then create or complete the assignment as you can see from here and uh, for example if you come down and you will have advanced uh, Visualization option where you are, where we are going to introduce you to alternate way of visualizing these tools, which will be extremely useful to, for example, um, <clears throat> um, fine tune the visualization to uh, to produce publication quality visualization. Right, and we have given uh, practice sections for visualizing this also. Right, where you can get the tool, get the tool to run and create an output uh, here, which you can download or which you can visualize whether it's uh, working perfectly or not. That's what I wanted to show you. And with that, uh, let me hand this over back to Sigori. And sorry for taking five minutes extra. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to uh, resolve it here. Uh, if you have more detailed questions, then I will be very happy to answer that during our sessions uh, in the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shubham, for uh, playing the video. So I guess you all have a rough idea of what uh, we will be including in the coursework and uh, the associated online resources which uh, are there on the Omics Logic Learn portal so as to enhance or uh, upscale your conceptual as well as practical skills. Um, now I'll just quickly share my screen once again so that I can tell you that how you can enroll in this particular program, what are the resources which you'll have access to once you will join the program, and then uh, what are the available scholarship. So on the same uh, program page, uh, Shubham, could you please share the link of the program page in the chat box? On the same program page, when you scroll down, when you scroll a little bit more, you could find three different tenures. One is 45 days, then is 60 days, and then is 90 days. So there are some common resources which you'll all have access to when you'll enroll in the program. So the common resources are, you will have access to the online tutorials. Then you will have access to the project example, which uh, Sri Gauri just showed you uh, while explaining the Omics Logic Learn portal and the different tabs present in uh, the portal. Then third is the coding sessions. So obviously R means coding. So you will have access to coding sessions, Google Collab notebooks, etc. Then all the session recordings, virtual, uh, the recording, a recorded version of the sessions would be shared with you. And in fact, uh, the recordings will be present on the program page itself. So once you will enroll in the program, those participants can see the recordings of each session here uh, below the associated online resources also. So uh, now moving further, 
you will have access to the online mentor support online technical support via our whatsapp groups because i guess uh, nowadays whatsapp is the most feasible uh, kind of a group where one can uh, you know uh, clarify their doubts and quickly ping and uh, get across verification of their queries then the la the sec the second uh, last is the certificate after the completion of the program and then the example cloud pipelines on the t bio info server so by example cloud pipelines i mean the data set is being already uploaded over there and you can visualize uh, the uh, visualize the results uh, how the visualize how the results look like etc you cannot interpret your own data set or you cannot download your own data set and do the interpretation for them now what is the difference between the three is in 45 days you all will go through with the full fledged training related to r uh, related to the syllabus and the curriculum which i just showed you and uh, both conceptual as well as practical then in 60 days you have two different opportunities one is the research proposal like you will have access to the first 45 days would be devoted to your training part and the next 15 days the left 15 days would be devoted to your uh, like how you can draft your research proposal once your research proposal is done you can share your research proposal with the mentor so as to get a valuable feedback from him or her and accordingly you can do the amendments you can do the changes and further complete your uh, project the research project and the second one is one on one mentor sessions so for example uh, if you are stuck somewhere and you cannot join any group live sessions so you'll be having access to one on one mentor sessions also where we can fix the call of yours with the mentor of around 20 to 30 minutes and you can clarify your doubts in 90 days you would have access to three different things i would say one is the project driven cloud pipelines on t bio for server this is the research license access which you'll get one again is uh, the one-on-one -on -one mentor session and third is that you have 45 days extra to draft your own independent project so the first 45 days would be your training and the last 45 days the second uh, the the next 45 days would be like we'll be guiding you how you can complete your own independent research project and come up with a research publication and if not research publication if you are interested in poster presentation in different research symposium or international conferences so this is also one of the outcome so this is the difference between the 45 60 and 90 days tenure the resources which one would have access to in common and the additional one also now talking about the pricing part so as you can see on my screen right now i the pricing is reflecting in inr for the indian for the asian uh, community so for 45 days it's 7500 for 60 it's 10000 and for 90 it's 15000 and now if someone who is in us or in maybe a nigeria or in any european country so they can change the currency according to their currency so for example i'll just show you for usd the pricing for uh, usa or the canadian people community is 150 for 45 days then 300 for 60 days dollars and then dollar 450 for 90 days and if i uh, for the nigerian community or the african one then if you'll scroll down you can see here the pricing in naira as well uh, so for 45 days, it's Naira 50,000. For 60 days, it's Naira 1 lakh. And then for 90 days, it's Naira 1 lakh 50,000. Now, how one can proceed with the payment checkout? So for example, if someone is interested in 90 days, they can simply click on this buy now button. And uh, the Omix Logic checkout page would appear. If there is any coupon code available, you can click or you can type the coupon code here click on apply button you can see a message popping up that the coupon code has applied successfully then you need to fill out the user details your name your email address your phone your country occupation organization etc and you can and when uh, the coupon is successfully applied you can see the order summary over here you can see that the discount coupon has apply, uh, applied and the total would automatically change 
Once it is done, you can click on this checkbox and select the payment method, either Stripe through credit card or maybe debit card or via PayPal. So this is how uh, the payment checkout is done. Other than this, we have uh, other options also like bank transfer is available. Then those who are in India or in like Asian community uh, for them, we have UPIs also Google Pay or uh, like Paytm, etc. UPIs are available. And then we have a different uh, pay then link also. If someone is not uh, eligible or like because of some currencies issue, etc. So we can provide them with other uh, payment options also. Now, the last thing which I wanted to discuss with you all is about the scholarship opportunities. So as you know that the date is fast approaching and the first session is next week, 20th, that is Monday. Uh, we are uh, giving uh, right now with 20 to 30 percent scholarship or I would say up to 50 percent scholarship to the uh, to our uh, community, to our bioinformatics community. And those who are interested uh, to avail the scholarship, please drop your email address in the chat box and our representatives would connect with you via email and uh, or maybe a phone call. And Shrigori, could you please also drop uh, my credentials, my official credentials, my contact number and email address in the chat box. So those who are interested, if they can directly connect with me uh, via WhatsApp or mail, etc. What is the most feasible mode for them to communicate with me? They can do so. And uh, Please drop your email IDs, whosoever is interested. Now, if anyone is having any question regarding registration part, the resources, the payment, the scholarship, anything, please feel free to uh, either unmute or type uh, in the chat box and I'll be there to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Over to you, Shrivari. Thank you so much, Sparsh and Shubham. So we'll pay, uh, pause for a couple of seconds for the participants to share their queries. Uh, Sparsh, we have a query from Professor Hussain. He is asking, how can I pay from Bangladesh? Yes. So, uh, Professor Hussain, uh, please do let us know on the given mail address in which particular tenure you are interested. And we shall provide you with a payment link in your Bangladesh currency. And you can proceed uh, through the link given that we'll be providing you. Yeah, thank you. We'll be uh, like we'll be mailing you, and uh, like one of our representative would connect with you, regard confirming your tenure, etc. And then we'll provide you with a payment link, and you can proceed further with the payment checkout process. I hope that answers your question. You're welcome. Thank Anyone? you so much. Uh yeah. Anyone who's having any further queries, please uh, ping in the chat or uh, please those who are interested to be a part of the program and enroll, uh, please drop your uh, email address here and we'll be connecting with you. Pallavi Sharma, ma'am, will you please repeat about scholarship? Sure, Pallavi. So regarding the scholarship, I was telling that we are offering right now to everyone up to 50% scholarship. So those who are interested, they can ping in the chat box their mail address and our representative will connect with you and guide you the steps to avail the scholarship accordingly. So um, Pallavi, please drop your email address and maybe either Shubham or any other representative would connect with you and uh, guide you the steps to further register uh, for the avail the scholarship and enroll for the program. Thank you so much, Pallavi. And uh, Colette is asking, you have mentioned that the scholarship only covers 50% of the fee. 
uh, call it, uh, call it uh, I guess I haven't mentioned this right now that uh, the scholarship will only cover 50% of the fee. Uh, this 50% uh, off or discount was give like was active in January um, till mid of the January and now it's not active. But still, we are providing uh, different participants from different community who are facing some financial problem or uh, we are providing them with 50 percent scholarship right now. Also, if you're interested, please uh, like share your email address here in the chat box and uh, we will be guiding you and we'll be uh, texting or mailing you accordingly. Sure, Hussein. Uh, please drop your email address. I guess we have your email address. You have already done so. We'll connect with you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Hussein and Colette. Does uh, anyone else have any further queries regarding the registration or the scholarship? If no one has any uh, no further queries, we'll be uh, ending today's meeting. So before we end the meeting, please uh, share your email IDs to receive the details of the program and the scholarship form. Thank you so much, Aparna. We'll take a note of it. Thank you, Nuranir and Aparna. We have noted your email ID. Thank you so much, Gelsi. Nelson. Thank you, Pallavi. All right, then. If uh, no one else is left to um, share their email IDs or uh, ask their queries, we'll be ending today's uh, webinar. And with that, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's webinar. And along the way, if you're having any queries, please feel free to reach out to us uh, through the email ID that I've provided in the chat. That is marketing at omixlogic.com. And I've also shared the contact number. I'm resharing it once more so that in case you have missed, you can reach out. And with that, thank you so much and have a great day. Thanks, Jade.